Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about what has been a staple for the United States Marine Corps for almost 40 years. The amphibious assault vehicle is also well known as the AAV. Now, being introduced in 1972, the AAV is now being replaced in the coming years. It has been used in many conflicts from the Falkland Wars by Argentine Marines in the 1980s to present-day Iraq and many conflicts in between. The AAV is a fully tracked amphibious landing vehicle designed to take Marines from ship to shore and even farther inland as showcased during the Gulf War and the invasion of Iraq. Now, before we can appreciate it, we must understand it's passed all the way back to 1930s and 1940s when engineers and planners had to find a way to get Marines ashore while defended Japanese beaches during World War II. So, the solution to that was the LVT, which stands for Landing Vehicle Tracked. If you've seen any footage from the Pacific Beach landings, you've most likely seen this vehicle. It is shaped like a box that carried Marines from ship to shore with one or two machine guns added on top. But that was just one variant of the LPT. The other well-known variant was the same thing, but it boasted a 37mm gun, almost identical to that of the M3 Stuart light tank at the time. Now, these LVTs were very capable for the time. They were able to go as fast as 25 miles per hour on land, and up to 6.5 miles per hour while in water and even 125 miles inland and 75 miles in the water. They also carried 18 fully equipped Marines. Now, to be able to put Marines on shore and go inland while providing fire support, it was perfect for the Marine Corps and all the way to the Korean War where they were used for the landing at Incheon and the Han River crossing to retake Seoul in 1950. Now, in the 1950s, existing LVTs were replaced by the LVTP-5, which was a family of amphibious armored vehicles used by the Marine Corps and is still in service today with the Philippine Marine Corps, just not in as great numbers. Except into the services in 1956, out of the 1,100 or so built, many saw action in the Vietnam War. With the ability to carry 34 passengers with 3 plus crew, it is great to be able to put a good amount of troops to establish an area. Able to go 30 miles per hour on land and about 7 miles per hour in the water. But right before the Vietnam War ended, it was replaced by the LVTP-7 introduced in 1972 and in 1982 a service life extension was conducted and the LVT-7s were converted into what we know today as the AAV. The AAV has 1.8 inches of armor, too much armor and it will greatly reduce the buoyancy and it boasted a Mark 19 40mm grenade launcher. As for maneuverability, it was able to go 15 to 20 miles per hour off road while going 45 miles per hour on surface road. The AAV has rich combat history and not just with the United States Marine Corps. Going back to 1982, when 20 U.S. built LVTP-7s were used by Argentina during the 1982 invasion of the Falkland Islands, with all of them returning home to the Argentine mainland before the war ended. From 1982 to 1984, LVTP-7s were deployed to U.S. Marines as peacekeepers in Beirut, Lebanon, only suffering minor damage from small arms and shrapnel. On October 25, 1983, as had a successful beach landing on Grenada as part of Operation Urgent Ferry. Fast forward to eight years to the Gulf War in 1991, the AAVs were used heavily, and after the 2003 invasion of Iraq, the AAV-7A1s, kind of a tongue twister, were heavily criticized for providing poor protection and crew passengers compared to vehicles such as the M2 Bradley. In one incident, eight were disabled or destroyed during the Battle of Nazareth while under fire from RPGs, mortar, and artillery fire. While in August of 2005, 14 U.S. Marines were killed when their AAV struck a roadside bomb in the Euphrates River Valley. Since then, the AAV has received survivability upgrades and in 2016 of January, upgrades included buoyant ceramic armor panels so to keep the vehicle's buoyancy, as well as spall liners inside the vehicle to protect from fragmentation from projectiles. The upgrade also included armor protected fuel tanks and the well needed aluminum armor underbelly providing MRAP equivalent blast protection from IEDs and other explosives. The Marine Corps, however, only decided to upgrade 392 out of the 1,000 vehicle fleet to instead opting for the ACV. Which brings us to the replacement of the AAV, which is the ACV, short for Amphibious Combat Vehicle. 
This vehicle replaces the would-be expeditionary fighting vehicle that would have replaced the AAV but was canceled in 2015. The requirements for the new ACV is that it should have countermeasures to contend with direct and indirect fire as well as landmines. It should be able to remove her with the M1A1 Abrams. The ACV must have weapons to destroy a vehicle similar to itself and have weapons to engage targets from a standoff distance. The Marine Corps put emphasis that the speed on water is a top requirement even if it means reducing troop carrying capacity so as to spend less time vulnerable in the waters. And lastly, the Marine Corps wants the ACV to be self-deployable from an amphibious assault ship 12 miles from shore with 17 Marines on board and it must travel 8 knots or faster. With all that being said, the Marine Corps is ready to replace the aging fleet of AAVs for something better suited for the future of amphibious warfare. Now, in the comment section below, let me know what y'all think about the AAV and its intended replacement. If you want to see more videos, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified about future videos. Thank you so much.